to tell you a little bit about our research project based on a book written by a famous doctor and teacher, Janusz Korczak, who is now known as a father of children's rights. It might be really old, but he got us thinking about lots of concepts like etiquette and democracy, which are relevant today. And we want to tell you one of the most important ideas he had, that children are people and children have the right to be respected. Oh, wait a minute. No, um, the right to respect is not an official right. It's uh, not one of the legal rights. It's not in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. I mean, what does respect even look like? Respect means that I should be taken seriously, not made fun of or laughed at, especially when I want to say something that's important to me. I know one thing about social media. Adults like to post and blog, but it's often about us. They tell everyone how proud they are, but they also share our bad days or even our illnesses. A quick search of social media finds these pictures, memes, viral challenges, which often humiliate and embarrass children without their permission or by tricking them. These have been shared thousands of times with millions of comments. Yeah, we, we do laugh share, post, blog, these pictures of crying babies and toddler tantrums without even really thinking about it. We were going to put up a viral challenge slide here, uh, which is the, called the candy slide, which some of you, uh, candy challenge, which some of you may know, which has been uh, viewed over 65 million times. But the girls pointed out that by sharing this with you again, we would be turning these children into victims again. And that was a contradiction. Respect means that some things are supposed to be private people. <laughs> right. And knowing the difference is about consent. It's confusing because some of this stuff is actually pretty funny. We don't understand this idea of consent thingy. Okay. So I'm going to try and uh, explain it, perhaps like Janusz Korczak did in his book, in terms of respecting rights. So if we think about what democracy is, uh, the idea of consent is that the people have confirmed that the government has the right to have power over them. And looking back into history, this is quite different than, say, the divine right of kings or colonialism, where people did not provide consent to be governed. They were tyrants. Yes, so individual consent forms consensus. And the U United Nations Declaration of Human Rights uh, declares that this is the basis of the power of government. So this is a talk about power and government. But there's a problem talking about human rights because we're children, so shouldn't we be talking about children's rights? Y yeah, actually, children are... Uh, they do have children's rights, and they're not human, so <laughs> don't have human rights. Yes. No, wait a minute. What? Of course we're humans. I don't know about you, but... I am. Okay, so in history, the argument that somebody is not fully human or not a rational person was used to justify killing, slavery, and lots of terrible things. In the past, uh, certain groups of people, uh, women minorities, people with disabilities, were said to be uh, not thinking or feeling like real people do. So they were not considered rational. They were perhaps subhuman or they just simply were not afforded full human rights. So this often allowed many governments to do things to those people without their consent uh, by justifying that it was for their own good or perhaps it was just in the best interests of society. Uh, the best interest when you dismiss us when we protest by crying or just being weird, when you don't take us seriously, it reminds us that our thoughts and feelings are not as important as yours. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Because I'm short. When you're smaller, maybe weaker, people forget about you, and sometimes adults act as if they own you, like a puppy or a doll. Uh, when you do things without asking or really caring about what the other person thinks or feels because they're a bit smaller or a bit weaker, that's when we ignore rights and we're breaking some of the rules of respect. For others and also for ourselves. So what we're saying is that respecting children's rights isn't about some far away UN laws. It's in our social relations every day. It's here and it's online. And consent, respect, rights, these are all key ideas in building a fair democracy. I make judgment, form opinions and lend my preferences all the time, just not in the way you think of it. 
I even vote. But most of the time, it doesn't count. So developing democracy is, a pe is about caring and asking me what I think when something is important to me. But what you usually want is really annoying. Hey! So here's the dilemma. What different people want is usually in conflict, which means that uh, rights are usually in conflict. If you leave children and young people out of the conversation, that's a third of the people in the world. If you dismiss us and don't consult us, in a few years' time, you'll wake up to your rude shock and wonder how the world changed. And it was in Cortex's book that he told us how the world works. Adults don't do as they told, but they want us children to listen. How do we know what to do for ourselves, tell right from wrong, if we only learn by the carrot or the stick, especially with technology changing so fast? Yeah, it's a good point, Blanca, because technology is changing so fast, and so is society. And when we're on social media, it's both adults and kids who should be developing critical thinking and judgment with these new ideas. And it's not just about uh, thinking how to ban this and or the other way, letting them do whatever they want. It's about working together on complex problems involving technology. The problem with regulations is that while we're ra writing all of these laws, uh, these kids are doing something new. So if we think about consent, consulting, it's not enough for full participation. We need to make sure that kids have access to the right tools. Access to technology is one way of being heard. And really, you should listen to us children because we can be very clever and reasonable when we want to be. Yeah, yeah, they can be really unreasonable as well. So remember back to our crying child and our toddler tantrums. Sometimes when they're screaming that it's not fair, uh, they're the anarchists. They are asking some of society's most critical political questions about inequality, about uh, difference in inabilities, difference in economic and social status, and also those really key questions about good and evil, right and wrong, and perhaps a little bit about being a hypocrite. So when we think about us adults, uh, about the way we vote and about the way maybe we have radical political leanings, we actually have to acknowledge that it's us who are not understanding their struggles and protests. So partially, we've got to consider that we are part of that old hierarchy that traditional, conservative, previous generation. And we already think we know how the world works, and we're trying to tell them how it's going to be. And we are the rebels, trying to change it. Viva la revolution! Uh, okay, so, right, settle down, Shay. Uh, there's always been this tension between the previous generation and the new, between the young and the old, and especially with technology. We've got society changing so fast, we actually have to work together to make sure that we're able to strike a balance. It's respecting children's right helps to build democracy in this digital age. Okay, so more than a century ago, when Janusz Korczak was fighting for democracy and fighting for independence, he's the one who told us that respecting child rights is the way to build a more creative, a more just, and a fairer society. That's the end of our talk. If you like us, give us a big thumbs up, one of these, or one of these. <laughs>